Modern Monday. Hey, how's it going? This is K Ponce. You are on NewMotGaming.com, and this is Modern Monday. This deck is Gideon's Shadow. I brewed it up when Ixalan came out, and I've been tuning it a little bit since then. It abuses the fact that the Planeswalker rule has been changed so that you can have more than one of any one name Planeswalker on the battlefield. It used to be that if you had a Gideon battleforged out, you could not cast Gideon of the Trials without sacrificing one of them. But that's not the case anymore. Now you can have battleforged Trials and Ally of Zendikar out all at the same time. So the other idea that I had was, oh, Gideon of the Trials has this uh, emblem thing that says I can't die, which is kind of good with cards like Dark Confidant and Thoughtseize. And when I'm playing those cards already... Death Shadow seems pretty cool. I could just play a bunch of fetch lands, right? And so I did. I just put nine fetch lands in here. Caves of Koilos, which is a good dual land that also deals damage to us. Rounding out the rest of the list, we've got four Fatal Push. I think it's pretty necessary. I was playing a split of Fatal Push and Dismember, but I think Fatal Push is just better. A couple of Collective Brutality, which is great for getting rid of our extra Kithians. If we end up drawing more, there is a definite downside to playing four of a legendary 2-1 in your deck. Lingering Souls, great in any black-white deck, basically. And then one of Damnation to clear the board if things get ugly. And also you can switch gears if you have a Damnation in your hand. A couple paths in the sideboard to deal with bigger threats that Fatal Pushes don't kill. An extra Damnation effect in Wrath of God, which is nice. It, it's the same in our deck because we're basically split down the middle for black sources and white sources. You might get surgical or whatever. Lost Legacy, <laughs> I don't know, nobody's really playing that in Modern, but you never know. Phyrexian Arena for the control matchups, the grindier decks. Zealous Persecution, great against opposing Lingering Souls and other small creature decks. Stony Silence, obviously great against Affinity and other artifact decks. Relic of Progenitus is better than Rest in Peace in our deck because Lingering Souls. Ranger of Eos is good in the grindy matchups to go get more Death Shadows or a Kithian in a Death Shadow. I don't know how often that would actually come up. Forge Tender is pretty good. Also searchable with Ranger against Burn and against other decks that play Lightning Bolt. But uh, yeah, that's the list and let's take it into a league. Modern Monday. Hey yo, welcome to round one with Gideon's Shadow. Um, so this hand has four lands. Collective Brutality, I can discard one of the lands. We're on the draw, and I actually don't mind this hand on the draw. I'd like to have a one drop, but it's not like we can cast Death Shadow on turn one anyway. So really we're looking for like Thoughtseize and Kithian. So this hand's fine. I mean, we have interaction and we have threats. Tron. All right. Tron is probably a, not a great matchup for us here. Um, this might be Eldrazi Tron. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll find out. Not sure if I want to take three off this Delta or not, since we don't have a Death Shadow in hand. And we're not, oh, it's Blue Tron. Huh. So, Blue Tron, I'm really not worried about my life total. I think I will take three. In case we draw a Death Shadow, we want, it, we want it online as soon as possible. Um, it's very likely that our play this turn is going to get condescended. So maybe I lead with a bob because I really want to land the tide hollow next turn. Um, no, I'm just gonna lead with tide hollow. I could draw into thought seizes and the like with bob. It's either gonna get remanded or condescended. I feel like oh no. All right. They have Commit to Memory. What? That's interesting. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, Repeal, Cyclonic Rift, and Snappy. So, wow, they have Tron. No, they don't. All right, never mind. Uh, they have just a tower and another power plant. 
thought they had a mine in play for some reason. Um, let's see. Snapcaster is their only creature that actually can block my Tide Hollow, which would probably be something they want to do, especially if I take something they want here. Uh, repeal is the only one that draws them a card. So I probably want to take the Repeal. It's either Repeal or Snapcaster. I don't think I'm interested in taking either of those. Um, if I take Snapcaster, then I, I can attack unimpeded for a little bit. Um, I think it's just Repeal. Let's just take their card draw. So they can't dig deeper to find Threats and or Tron. They are going to Rift. All right. That's fine. And I guess next turn we'll just repeal if I don't take the repeal. But I'm pretty likely to take the repeal, right? Yeah, there's you an island, which is good. They can snap Cyclonic Rift next turn. But I want them to snap Cyclonic Rift so I can play Gideon. I think I just attack. So by attacking here, no blocks. Yeah. All right. By leaving up commit, which means I think I just want to cast both bobs. We know their hand is. Snapcaster, commit, and and another power plant. Um, so yeah, let's just play a bob. Uh, I should play land first. So if they snap Cyclonic Rift, they can get the repeal back. They Cyclonic Rift the Sculler, they re they hope to repeal Bob, but we're just going to play another Bob. Oh, they're going to condescend. Alright, that's totally fine. We're just going to play another Bob, and they're going to be sad. What are they doing with the scries? How do I find the chat again? Here we go. They went top bottom with the scries. All right. I could take their commit. I don't think that's better than playing Bob. Ooh, they found Tron. Damn. Yeah, I guess that's something you'd leave on top is the other Tron piece. That's pretty dangerous. We know two of their three cards, but that other card is scary. Also, this means they can cast both Snapcaster to block and... Oh, they're going to commit plus repeal. Oh, yeah, that's, that's another thing they can do with all that mana. Seems good. I guess we get to slam Gideon in that case though, which is pretty nice. But they did just draw a card and they can draw seven new cards next turn, which is pretty scary. 
Um, Dotsies and Gideon seem great. Treasure Mage Snappy. So I don't care too too much about Snapcaster. Like yeah, they can snap repeal. But I'm pretty sure I care more about them treasure maging a worm coil. And pass the turn. So yeah, that commit to memory is interesting. I think we're gonna get a whole new hand here. Either that or they snap repeal the Gideon. There's the other power plant. There's one unknown card. Probably want to force their hand here with the Tide Hollow. Before moving to attacks. They could also snap commit. But I don't think they want to do that. Snap, repeal probably, Cyclonic Rift. All right, now they can they overload a Cyclonic Rift? That's interesting. Sure, knowledge, gotcha. Hmm. I suppose I should have used Gideon. Before attacking there. Can they overload with the... They can't cast the overload, I don't think. I don't think that's how that works. It's an alternate casting cost, and oh, maybe they can. In which case, I shouldn't have recast Bob, I guess. I guess it, it doesn't matter. I don't have any instants anyway. I'm actually interested to know whether or not Overload works. I don't think that it does. I, I feel like I looked this up back when those cards were both in standard. Yeah, they can't. Yeah, because Overload is an alternate cost. They cannot do that. What'd you draw? A Karn? No way, Drew Eugene. They drew Ugin? No, Walking Blister for four. That's also really good, but not as good as Ugin. <laughs> That was a pretty good draw, the Fatal Push there. Making them use their Walking Ballista now. So 
so they don't get too uh and now I get to take their thirst oh no they can cast thirst in response it's an instant right yeah all right yeah walking ballista was definitely one of their best draws there but fatal push was a pretty good draw for me Um, yeah, just gonna attack with both allies. Make another one. And they're gonna get <clears throat> they're gonna cast thirst for knowledge here and hopefully this is only draw one of three cards. Yeah, they discarded a power plant. But they made their this ugh, they made their decision pretty fast, so oh nothing. Oh commit to memory, that's right. Yeah. We got new sevens. Tide Hollow is going to be good. They do have six mana available right now, which is pretty scary. It makes me kind of wish that I had Path in my main deck for Worm Coil. Trinket Mage to go get Walking Ballista. Makes sense. We're going to have to take the Walking Ballista with the Tide Hollow. Now they're getting Chalice. And they're going to play a Chalice on one. Ooh. That does severely neuter my hand. <laughs> chalice on one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Touche, my friend. I didn't have anything to leave play that turn, so I couldn't fatal push in response. That's a bummer. Um, yeah, we're obviously attacking with Gideon here. And playing Shambling Vent and just Tide Hollowing. Yeah, this isn't awesome, but we're, we're in okay shape. Commit to memory is uh, proving pretty strong here for my opponent who plays big mana. It does make sense that they're running a card like Commit to Memory. I've never seen it in uh, Mono Blue Tron. I also haven't played against Mono Blue Tron that much. Treasure Mage and Gear Hulk. Gear Hulk doesn't do anything at this point. So it's just a dude. Which does block Gideon really well, but we have to take Treasure Mage, I'm pretty sure. Otherwise, they get a Worm Coil, and yeah, we can't beat the Worm Coil. We can eventually beat Gear Hulk by just keeping attacking through it. Keeping on attacking. What they find? What do they need seven mana for? Oh, they also had a Teleria West? Oh, yeah, that's really good. They can go get Walking Ballista. They find a Platinum Angel? Huh. I'm cold to Platinum Angel in my main deck here. That sucks. 
That was a pretty good draw opponent. Pretty pretty decent one. I guess they also could have transmuted Teleria West and gotten a walking ballista and that would have been really bad for us as well. Plus had mana for Gearhog. Yeah. We're just in rough rough shape. Huh. Mirror pool. This is interesting. <laughs> I guess I get to take the Gear Hulk here. No, I can't. There's a Chalice on one. Well, yeah, Chalice on one turns out pretty good against us. Um, yeah, I'm cold to the Platinum Angel. I'm just going to scoop here. Could have kept playing it out. I guess, like, there's some world in which we mill them out and have a Gideon to Trials in play, but since I can't do anything to the Platinum Angel, eventually the Platinum Angel kills Gideon, right? Uh, or Walking Ballista kills Gideon, and yeah. So, oh, I wasn't cold to Platinum Angel. We do have Damnation in the main deck. All right, I should have kept playing at least one more turn there. Um, Path seems like it'll be good. Um, Fatal Push, not as good. I think I want fewer fatal pushes. Maybe no fatal push. Just doesn't seem worth it against them. I mean, it it kills like Solemn and Treasure Mage, <laughs> which I don't really care that much to kill. Um, Stony is for sure good. They're playing things like Walking Ballista Expedition Map. Um, usually they run some amount of Mind Slaver. So probably three Stonies. Um, not going to cut any of the interaction. Maybe a Kithian can go out. And yeah, that seems about right. I think leaving one damnation in is fine. It's just a third way to deal with um, problem creatures like Gear Hulk and uh, actually maybe damnation should be Ranger. Yeah, actually we're gonna do Ranger instead of damnation. We'll just have the two paths as our outs to uh, Platinum Angel. Stony, Path, two Gideons and a Bob. This hand is uh, pretty great. Definitely not mad at it. Again, I don't care about my life total against this deck, so I'm just going to take all the damage. And we have Death Shadow in our deck, as you can see. Um, here I think it's actually more important to get the Bob out right now we want to hit our land drop next turn and be able to play stony and death shadow although it'll be hard to play death shadow dismember sure we'll need yeah actually we can't play death shadow even if we draw a fetch uh, with only two mana they probably can't counter the stony silence though so that's nice. Remand. Alright. Well, they did have the remand to slow down the stony silence. And now they can counter if I don't draw another land. I did draw another land. Try this again. It resolves. And I'd like to try and play Death Shadow here, but it's probably not good to try and play Death Shadow into their Condescend. 
and their deck is fairly neutered with the stony silence in play. So I'm just going to pass the turn. Repeal stony silence. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Bluetron is definitely one of the more annoying decks to play against. <laughs> um, I kind of do want to draw more land, so I'm just going to leave this uncracked. There we go. I guess let's try Stony Silence again first. Then I think Gideon of the Trials seems like a good a good play here. I'm just gonna get all the godless shrines, go down to seven. Very likely that this gets countered, but uh, I'd like for them to tap out rather than cast like Thirst for Knowledge or something. Remand. All right. Yeah, remand is just time walk usually, huh? They're up to five mana. It's a little scary. We need to resolve some threats at some point here. Um. Yeah, let's go Gideon. Let's go down to six. <laughs> Five mana. Condescend for four. All right, you got it. They could describe two. They go bottom, top. And I'm going to play a really big Death Shadow. Gemstone Caverns. So it's pretty likely that they have a Snapcaster repeal here. Which is kind of okay. I don't really want to pay any more life since 8 is plenty power on the Death Shadow. No blocks. They're just going to 8. Alright. Um, they don't play sweepers really, do they? I guess they have Ugin. Yeah, Ugin would be really bad, but they can't cast it next turn, so Ugin's fine. I might as well play things into it. I think I'll lead with Gideon. Snapcaster condescend. Condescend for four. Sure. And we have super lethal here, so I feel like we're in pretty good position. They are scrying two though, and they went top, top. Interesting. That's scary. That they put that they put both the cards on top. But we have two lethal threats. They could have Cyclonic Rift. They have so many cards that just like get you, huh? There's for knowledge. That's good. That's not Cyclonic Rift. That probably means we're going to game three here. Unless they hit something. I don't know what it could be. The fact that we have Path in hand means, like, unless they have a blocker and a counterspell for the Path, <laughs> they're in a lot of trouble.
Sundering Titan goes to the graveyard. Plutron isn't very good at actually hitting Tron. Um, they're better than Eldrazi Tron, but as far as like the non-Eldrazi Tron Tron decks go, Plutron has trouble um, finding their Tron because they don't have things like Sylvan Scrying and Ancient Stirrings to go search for it. Um, they're just relying on Draw and Scry, which I mean is better than nothing, but it's definitely not as good as Sylvan Scrying and... Uh, Ancient Stirrings. Um, yeah, let's just go for the path. They probably have Snapcaster Repeal. And that does keep them alive. It's possible I should have left... Alright. Yeah, I went for the path because they would... The only out they had, if I go for path there, is uh, Snapcaster Repeal, or like two more Repeals or something. But, uh, yeah. It did the trick. Um, so Stony's good, but... Yeah, I guess maybe their hand was full of things that were bad against Stony. They kept putting it back in my hand. They are kind of a control deck. So I think Phyrexian Arena isn't terrible here. Um, yeah, I want Ranger. A threat that draws me more threats feels pretty good. The body isn't very relevant against their deck. They have a lot of two power creatures that get value so like it, it'll die and it's not great but uh the fact that it gets me two other creatures is pretty nice and collective brutality isn't amazing but it does take a card out of their hand and i think that makes it worth it takes like a cyclonic rift or something it, it did its job I don't really like being on the draw in modern in general but especially against uh, a deck full of condescends and remands and repeals them having a, a one land advantage on you definitely can uh, compound some disadvantages but um, we do have the tools to fight through that type of thing here we have a one lander on the draw with thought sees to get into the trials and a way to get out of the one land lock here. I think it's a keep, but we might be sad. <laughs> it's close. Land me. All right, we got there. Yeah, just gonna take the full damage here because uh, we actually have Death Shadow in our hand this time. It's funny, this is only a two-color deck. It's, it's pretty easy to splash since I'm playing all these fetches and I want to be... I want to be fetching duels anyway. So it's pretty interesting that I'm running nine fetches and we're only playing two colors. Could very easily play another color Maybe I'll think about that for the next uh, the next video. But um, my opponent's got Dismember, Thirst for Knowledge, Talisman of Progress. So they have nothing going on except for Thirst for Knowledge. If I take the Thirst, I let them dismember my Dark Confidant. And I hope to just get there with Gideon. Um, if, I, if I take the Dismember, then hopefully I get there with Bob. And they don't have an answer for it. Um, I guess it's probably more likely that I run away with the game with Bob than with the Death Shadow later. We're not guaranteed to draw another land after next turn, whereas Bob kind of makes it a sure thing. This is pretty interesting. I think I just take the Dismember so that we can get there with Bob. 
obviously that sucks if they end up drawing a counter spell this turn and then Bob doesn't land. But yeah, I think I think just going for Bob makes the most sense here. All right, Bobby. We need them not to draw a counter spell, which if they just play Talisman right here, that means they didn't find the, the counter spell. Yeah, this is good. Then we get to Bob. And Bob needs to take us home. Also could have played Death Shadow and Kithy in there, but... What? They found another dismember. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Wow. That hurts. That hurts. We took the dismember. They top deck dismember. That is generally how it goes when I play against decks with... When I play Thoughtseize against anybody. They just go, yeah, had it. Hope to draw a land here so we can play both Stony Silence and one of these. Or we could just slam Gideon. Man. Them drawing that second dismember was rough, but uh, we still got a good hand here. We should be able to grind through as long as they don't hit a tower. I'm surprised if they were gonna do it then. Why they that they didn't? Uh... Well, we did hit a land, but it's a slow land. I'm not that scared of what can happen next turn, so I'm just gonna play that and play both Kithian and Death Shadow. Instead of the Stony Silence. Stony Silence is just super low value there. I need to start attacking. even though it was effectively a stone rain it's still stone rain next turn Ooh, yeah this is good for us they're digging for that tower discarded a worm coil did they find the tower They did find an expedition map, but they can't crack it yet, so we get to slam Stony. Yes. <laughs> oh, Stony Silence, baby. Oh, yes. Ooh, Stony Silence bailing me out here. Gotcha. Unless they have both repeal. Yeah, I guess if they have repeal, they can uh, claw their way back in here. But we're attacking for 8 next turn. They're at 10. Potentially more than 8 if we find another fetch land. It's lethal. Thoughts uses not lethal because, yeah, it's not lethal. But we're still going to cast it. Still attacking for 8, and that way we don't gain any life, which is actually bad with Death Shadow in play. Shambling Vent's a little awkward with Death Shadow. But uh, I wanted more dual lands, and yeah, I'll think about making it a three color deck later. I don't know what color we'd add. I guess blue would make sense, but. I'm not sure what cards we'd play if we brought blue in. Maybe Snapcaster. I've heard Snapcaster is pretty good. Commit on the Death Shadow. And then they can memory in a couple turns. All right. Fair enough. What else you got in that hand? Eugene, Treasure Mage, and Chalice. So, if they put Death Shadow on the bottom and then they Chalice, 
we're in some trouble, but I'd rather they didn't have a blocker next turn. The problem with not taking Eugene is that if they do find um if they do find the tower, then they can just slam Eugene and I lose. So I actually think I have to take Eugene. It's the only card that beats me here. You go to eight, they're on a two turn clock. They're probably gonna play the chalice for well actually no, they're probably just gonna play treasure mage. Get a worm coil, play a land, hope to draw another land next turn. Luckily Gideon makes it so worm coil doesn't um doesn't deal any damage. But it does stonewall our Kithian pretty well. They didn't hit a land, alright. So we're just going to fire up the vent. Fire up the Gideon and then swing out. And now if they don't block Kithian, they take six, go to two. But yeah, they have to block Kithian. And we'll pass the turn. And we got him. Tribal Gideon Shadow. <laughs> got there. Stony Silence really pulled its pulled its weight there. Modern Monday. Hello and welcome to round two. Pretty good showing last round with the uh, win against um, Blue Tron. Let's see, this hand has two Tide Hollows, a Gideon, and a Death Shadow. Not a lot of ways to make Death Shadow get out soon, but, I mean, it's a keep. We've got two drops, we've got powerful threats, and uh, we've got card advantage, so yeah. Probably just going to take a damage off Caves on end step on purpose, depending on uh, what it looks like my opponent's playing here. Cinderglade, go. Ooh. Um, hmm. in that case, I mean, I'm going to want to go down to 18 anyway. We're playing against Scape Shift more than likely. Um, I'm going to want to go to 18 anyway for the Death Shadow, so I'm just going to just gonna take the damage. And they're unlikely to have a way to deal with Bob here. So I think I want to play Bob first to hopefully get more aggression by playing the uh, Death Shadow soon. If we find a fetch land, then we could possibly play Death Shadow next turn, depending on how much damage we take off of the Bob. Yeah, I knew they were unlikely to kill Dark Confidant. So we have two Tide Hollows. Hopefully that's enough to stem the uh, Scape Shift action. Alright, we hit Lingering Souls, which was kind of good because it dropped us down to 15, but we didn't hit a land. So, we're just going to play this Tide Hollow. Hopefully take their only payoff card. Alright, Chandra. Yeah, we have a Fatal Push to deal with the Courser. So we're definitely taking Chandra here. Interesting. They're like a more mid rangey build, it seems, with Courser and uh, Chandra. I haven't seen that in a while. 
most builds are uh, more streamlined with uh, summoners packs and titans escape shifts Ooh, Valakut on top and they get to play it. Chandra on top. That's not good. Alright, we need to hit a fetch land here. That'd be really nice. Come on! <laughs> We've drawn four cards in the past two turns and no lands. Uh, it's pretty sad. Um, huh. Yeah, that's a bummer. Um, we know four of their five cards. We know that Chandra's coming off the top for them, and that's bad. Uh, I mean, I guess we could attack with Bob and then co-brew this thing down. But then we trade our Bob and our Collective Brutality... I don't love it, but I think that's what we're doing. Um, I guess since they're drawing another Chandra, maybe it doesn't matter if we give them back this one. Maybe we just attack with Tide Hollow. We can discard Lingering Souls and a Death Shadow maybe. Or maybe a Gideon. Yeah, Gideon's not happening anytime soon. Um, so we tag with Tide Hollow. They're drawing a Chandra anyway, so I don't think it really matters. Like, they, they're they going to have Chandra. Yeah, I think this is right. They're blocking... They get their Chandra back. We collected Brutality with three modes? Yeah, might as well. Wait a second. We don't want to do all three modes. We just want to do two. Because we don't actually want to gain life here. We have Death Shadow in hand. Three of them, actually. And we're going to discard the Lingering Souls. Alright. They drew a mountain. Would have been really good if they drew something better there, but... Yeah, like if they hit Scape Shift last turn, then that would have been a sweet thing to hit there. Uh, here's Chandra... Probably killing Bob. Makes sense. Where are our lands? There we go. Yeah, let's go to 10. Play. Sculler and a Shadow. That feels pretty good. We might have to just take that Chandra again. The other Chandra, yeah, I think that's what we're doing. And we got a 4-4 Death Shadow. They found a search. They are at 5 right now. So... With this search and this soccer tribe elder that they're probably playing, that puts them up to lethal with escape shift starting next turn. They also have five mountains in play. So actually that does six damage. Yeah, they just sack this at any time and deal six. Yeah, that's pretty scary. Huh. Ooh. They didn't kill our death shadow in time though. That's pretty great. Um, so I think we push it right now so that we kill the Chandra even though they're just going to play another one next turn that's good for us though if they're going to play another Chandra our death shadows are all 7-7s seven 
No, but if we take three, go to five, six, then we just die. Oh, yeah. We just die to the, the mountain coming to play. Ooh. And they have more search for tomorrow in hand. So I think we're just dead. Yeah, they already found two Valakids, and I think that just kills us. I don't know what we could do here. Yeah, I guess we just attack them with both of these. Yeah, I failed to realize that. Uh... Yeah, two Valakids and five mountains means, yeah, we're just dead. Yep, all right. What, they're targeting Death Shadow? They targeted Death Shadow with both of them? I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Like, we crack the Polluted Delta to keep it alive, and then we lose next turn, because they have another Sagro Tribe Elder and another Search. So, we're just dead here. Like, it doesn't matter, even though they take a bunch of damage. I guess if I had some way to, like, I don't know, like Team or Battle Rage. Wait, why are they still at 17? Oh, because they blocked. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to play out the other Death Shadows, even though it doesn't do anything. Because we are dead. To them just playing a mountain. Or Soccer Tribe Eldering for a mountain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Generally, I think Valakid's pretty good against Death Shadow strategies, especially if they just draw their Valakids naturally like that. Um, that was tough. Uh, we definitely don't want the Damnation. Um, Forge Tender isn't great. I mean, getting to the Trials would be great because we can we can turn off their Valakid itself. We just needed to draw more getting to the Trials that game. Um, I don't hate Forge Tender. Path is probably better than Fatal Push. Or maybe not. Fatal Push killing Corsair is really good. Maybe we just leave all the Fatal Pushes, even though it doesn't stop their Primeval Titan. Primeval Titan... Hmm, maybe we need some sort of out to prime time. Maybe just one path. And just run it like this. I don't really want to bring in the Forge Tenders because it's it's unlikely that they're going to bring in... Uh, yeah, I'll cut a Kithian for a Forge Tender here. Just one. Because sometimes they bring in, like, Anger of the Gods. I don't know if they bring in Anger of the Gods against Death Shadow generally, but... I think this is a keep. Triple Death Shadow. We don't really have a way to get to low life total, but once we do, we could hopefully close it out pretty fast. We really want to hand with some sort of hand disruption. So I don't know. Maybe this is just a loose keep. We really want Thought Seize. And Tide Hollow Sculler. Send your go. Alright, so starting next turn, we can play Death Shadows. We can play all three of them next turn. <laughs> and they're all 1 1s, and they all get Anger of the Gods 
but we do have burnt and forged tender to save that so yeah if we draw like some more fetch lands after this turn or just more ways to hurt ourselves like Thoughtseize. Sakura Tribe Elder. I don't want to draw more lands, so I'm just gonna take a godless shrine out of my deck so that I have slightly less chance to draw another land. I also don't want to draw four drops. Gonna play a bunch of one one death shadows. <laughs> they can make us gain life somehow, we're in a lot of trouble. But we are attacking for a lot next turn if we find some way to hurt ourselves. Maybe I should splash red for lightning bolt. Ooh, coarser. Wait, didn't they already play land this turn? Oh no, they didn't. Wow, that's really good. Huh. Yeah. Courser is exceedingly good right here. <laughs> Mostly because we didn't find a way to hurt ourselves. We found a swamp basic style. Not what we wanted. They're just drawing free cards off the top of their deck with the Courser. Chandra, sure. We really need to find a way to hurt ourselves here. There we go, we found one. Alright, so everybody at Chandra probably. And then we cast Lingering Souls and flash it back. Everybody except for Forest Tender. Uh, I guess we can just swing the Death Shadows at Chandra. And Chandra will die. We probably want to plus the Gideon though in case they have another Chandra. Rather than make a Knight, which is kind of low value. Yeah, all the Death Shadows at Chandra. Hmm. Whoops. I meant to uh, plus Gideon and attack them with Gideon. That was pretty bad. Now I guess we're just making a knight, which could be better if they don't have another Chandra, but if they do, it's much worse. Yeah, that was a misplay. I said I was going to pump Gideon up, and then I went to attack, so that was uh, pretty poor. We know the top card of their deck is a far seek. They're at five lands right now. We are dealing a lot of damage next turn. We got... Oh, no! I didn't even make it... Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, man. The misplays are real, you guys. Um. Oh, yeah. Gideon did not even make a night ally there. He just didn't do anything. He was just hanging out, being my friend, chilling. Escape shift with six lands. Yeah, that'll do. I guess it didn't matter, but 
All right. Make sure they have the amount of mountains they need here. Make sure they get the right stuff. Uh, but yeah, we're dead. Wait, was six? Maybe we're not dead. Does that kill us? Oh, and then they just play a mountain from their hand? Wait a sec. Oh, they had seven. All right, yeah. Yeah, we're dead. Modern Monday. So we lost there against Scape Shift. I think the problem was we kept a hand without any interaction. We did have a pretty good aggressive start, but they had seven lands before we could kill them, and we lost. I mean, the Force Tender was good. If they had an Anger in their hand, which they very well could have, it would have been really bad to play out all three of the Death Shadows. But since we had the Forge Tender out, it felt really safe to play all three Death Shadows out like that. Yeah, obviously them getting to seven and just casting uh, Scape Shift meant that it didn't really matter what we did the turn before. Even though I do think I was supposed to attack with Gideon there. Um, yeah, this is a keep. I'd like to draw either a Kithian or a Thought Seize next turn, but I mean, it's a keep. Oh. Affinity. This is interesting. I feel like Affinity has a pretty good matchup versus Death Shadow type things. But the good thing is I don't have to take damage off my stuff. Or maybe I still want to. With two Death Shadows now. And the Gideon. But Gideon's probably going to die pretty fast to the Flyers. Um, luckily they didn't do anything that interesting there, and they only have two cards left in hand. Unfortunately, we're on the draw here, so we're not going to get a chance to see what's in their hand with the Tide Hollow. The Tide Hollow is probably going to be a dead card. Um, uh, I'm just going to play the Delta and see what they do on their turn and decide whether or not I want to take three or just one. I think maybe getting the Death Shadows into play would be good. Edge champ. Huh. That guy's not gonna kill me fast, but he's gonna kill me effectively. I have no way to deal with him except for the one main deck damnation. So I guess we're just trying to draw damnation damnation here. Um looks like we will get their last card though, that's nice. But it's probably a land <laughs> since they didn't cast it. I mean, it's definitely possible that it's a uh, cranial plating and they wanted to just get this guy out first. So we're definitely going to cast Tide Hollow Scholar. But, uh. Yeah. I don't think it's worth it to pay the two life. Yeah, I'm gonna play conservatively here. Um, I haven't had a lot of a lot of uh, experience playing against aggro with a Death Shadow deck, and I always feel like I might be doing it wrong. Oh, Galvanic Blast me! All right, or Galvanic Blast the dude. It doesn't really matter. Well, yeah, I guess it definitely matters. All right, so I'm glad we didn't pay the life. Um, All right, could be worse here. We're not under the fastest clock, and our death shadows are gonna be pretty big pretty soon if we want them to be. And we do want them to be. Um, so they're one ones right now, but could easily be four fours. If we play Gideon in the Trials here, it's just going to die. I guess we could target the Ink Moth Nexus with its plus ability. Maybe that's the play, just Gideon in the Trials. Target Ink Moth. 
And this makes it kind of awkward for them. Um, we're definitely trying to dodge arc bound and cranial plating here, but yeah, we're we're gonna lose to either one of those cards either way. They're attacking Gideon, that's great. All right, they're spending time on Gideon here. The downside to that is our Death Shadows don't get bigger. So I suppose I wanna zero the Gideon of the Trials, play Gideon Ally, and plus it. If I plus one Gideon of the Trials, play Gideon Ally, they could kill Gideon of the Trials before I can make the emblem. I think I just make the emblem. Um, and here... I'll go to nine so we can play the Death Shadows as really big creatures soon. Not sure that was right, but I think we want the Death Shadows to be big when we do cast them so we can like kill pretty fast. Um, yeah. Should have attacked before doing all that stuff, but it's all right. Didn't give away, I mean it did give away a ton of information, but it was very unlikely that they were going to block either way. So at least one of the Gideons is dying here. Uh oh. Oh no. Both Gideons are dying. Wow. That was quite a draw, my friend. That was quite a draw. Jeez. The perfect card to kill both Gideons here. That's sad. That is really sad. And there's no way I can raise. I don't really want to show them that I'm playing Death Shadow. There's no way I could win that race there uh, with their edge champion. Oh, I guess we were still drawing into Damnation. I should have played one more turn to see if we found a Damnation. Yeah, actually that was wrong. I keep forgetting that I have Damnation in my deck, and that is an out to what was happening there. We're definitely bringing in Wrath of God, definitely bringing in Zealous and Zealous and three Stony Silences and Forge Tender is good, and Path. <laughs> Bringing in a lot of cards here. Um, I don't really like Big Gideon. I think it's pretty bad in this matchup. Lingering Souls is great. Dark Confidant is good. Tidehouse Sculler is not great. On the play, it is better, but I still don't really like it. Um, Death Shadow does end the game at some point. I do think I need a way to end the game. Thoughtseize I don't love. Since, I don't know, I mean Thoughtseize on turn one is pretty good. Definitely going to cut some amount of Kithians, maybe all the Kithians, they're, they're really not very good. This matchup. Um, and then some amount of Tide Hollows and Thought Seizes. Probably the Tide Hollows should go, because on turn two they could have already dumped their hand. Maybe I'll just go to three, three and three. 
Maybe two thought sees three tide hollow. Because it is at least a 2 2 later in the game, whereas Thoughtsy is just completely dead later in the game. But Thoughtsy doesn't die to our own damnation. Yeah, you know what? We want the Thoughtseizes. We'll leave one Tide Hollow. I guess we could bring in Ranger. Yeah, Ranger seems fine. No Tide Hollows. Uh, maybe we do cut a Thoughtseize for Akithian. Giving me a different turn one play that actually is okay if I draw it later. Actually, Kithian does block Master of Ethereum pretty well. Alright, Path, Damnation, Lingering Souls, Lingering Souls is definitely a keep. We do really want to hit the fourth land, but I'm still going to crack this fetch. It's possible I was supposed to just play the uh, caves first. Roberto, uh, yeah, that was a great draw actually because we had no two drop there. And as bad as life loss is against an aggro deck, it's really not that bad. And we're going to damnation at some point anyway. Most likely. Ooh, Galvanic Blast, yeah. Glad it didn't get pointed at me. And that is enough evidence right there that Bob is just a very good card, even against aggro. Because they just blasted it. And that was four damage they could have dealt to me. Steel Overseer. Hmm. Um, I don't think I want to path the Overseer since they're stuck on lands here. I think we're just going to uh, play Lingering Souls and let them commit more things to the board. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe I'm just supposed to path. I could just pass the turn as well, but I don't really like that. Yeah, we're just going to Lingering Souls. Um, it's a little too suspect to just pass the turn there, I think. You want to just keep playing things. Don't telegraph that you have a Wrath. Now there's Teal Overseer. That's great. Alright, I'm ready to Wrath. This board looks ripe for a wrath. We're just going to attack with these two friends. Uh, maybe we don't. Do we Do we dare pass the turn? What could we get punished by? A Thoughtseize? They could have boarded in Thoughtseize. That is possible. But I already made the decision not to attack, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Alright, they're playing stuff into it, though. That's good. Cool. Play another creature. Yes. Alright, we got there. <laughs> yes, alright. Paid off not playing the damnation there. Might as well soak up that three damage. And no more creatures.
Cranial plating with ink moth is pretty good. Unfortunately for them, we have a bunch of lingering souls tokens that are going to get flashed back here and played. It's going to be pretty hard for my opponent to come back from this. That damnation was quite good. And our clock's actually decent. Lingering Souls is pretty good. Pretty good. If they play a Edge Champion, like Memnite into Edge Champion here, then we're in trouble. So we're not out of the woods yet, actually. Edge Champion is still a huge problem. And it's actually kind of likely that they have it in their hand at this point. Activating Inky. Interesting. Dispatch. So if I path their Ink Moth in response, they net no. They net no actual lands, and I get rid of a creature, which is good. Yeah, I'm just going to path it in response so that we get to keep our vent. Because they will not have Metalcraft when it resolves. No. And they already had red mana anyway. Ravager, sure. And they scoop it up. Alright. Yeah, Damnation was pretty good there. Um, interestingly, if we ever drew a Death Shadow that game, it would have been terrible. But we played to what our hand was. And yeah, waiting that one turn worked out so well. Lingering Souls plays so well with Wraths. Um, that was really nice. I wonder how bad Kithian is, considering it does block Master of Ethereum pretty well. We may want all the Thought Seizes. And drop that Kithian, actually. I really want to be able to Thought Seize on turn one. Obviously, the, the future Thought Seizes are really bad, but. Kithian's also pretty low value. Yeah. I think we're going to see their cranial platings and edge champions and then wrap the board. And or kill all their guys. With Zealous and Wrath and Damnation. And we have stony silences. We have a lot of ways to interact with our opponent. And we do have the turn one Thoughtseize. And we have another interaction card. So this is going to be a keep. Um, it's not like a slam keep or anything, but turn one Thoughtseize. I'm happy about it. As long as they can't turn one the cranial plating, which they might be able to here. No zero drop. All right, this is good. We get to see their hand, and we drew a push. That was really nice. Uh, yeah, we're going to pay two life, and then pay two more life. Also, our Death Shadow is going to be online pretty soon, since we have a fetch in hand here. Steel Overseer and Dispatch. Um, well, we don't care about the Overseer, actually, because we can kill it with Fatal Push, so... 
We're just going to take the dispatch so that our Death Shadow can win the game and or Gideon Blink Moth. Oh. There's the Overseer. All right, I can't get low enough this turn to cast Death Shadow. So does that mean I want to cast Gideon first? Yeah, I probably do. Yeah, we're going to lead with Fatal Push here and a Shambling Vent, I think. Although going lower could also be good. Not 100% sure we were supposed to play Shambling Vent there, but at least all our lands are going to come in untapped from now on. And we are playing against an aggro deck, but knowing their hand, they just don't have anything going on. They drew something, though. They drew a plating. Ooh. That's scary. We know their hand is Darksteel Citadel. And they can't equip the plating this turn. But Gideon will die if we just play the Gideon. So we're not going to play Gideon. I guess we're going to play 1 1 Death Shadow. Hmm. And yeah, we're going to hold up Path. Obviously punished for um, not playing the fetch last turn and having a bigger death shadow. Being able to race better. Um, which one are they going to put it on? Did we just take this hit from the Blink Moth? I think we just take this. Get our death shadow huge and then have the path for next turn. The problem there being they could potentially shift it over to the other Ink Moth, or to the Ink Moth. But next turn we're going to Gideon, Blink Moth can't deal any damage, and then we can path the Ink Moth. Yeah, actually this is, puts us in great position. I think we just take the hit. Boom, huge death shadow. Oh no. They could have a Galvanic Blast here. <laughs> Maybe I need to play around Galvanic Blast. Yeah, I guess I'll play around Galvanic Blast. It just doesn't really make any sense to go down to four. Yeah, they did have a blast. All right, our our threat is dead. Gideon, get out there. Tell that ink moth it can't hurt you. Yeah, all right. Really glad we played around the Galvanic Blast because, yeah, that would have just been, been a sad moment. Um, can you get a planes? It'll push us a great draw. Let's get in there for some, some beats. This 
suppose I should have attacked with Shambling Vent there. Yeah, I definitely should have attacked with Shambling Vent. That was incorrect. I think it would have sped up the clock slightly. Yeah, definitely should have attacked with Shambling Vent there. Who are you going to attack? Me or Gideon? Me? Huh. I think I just let that happen then. Nah, because they could draw another Ink Moth here. I should have... Oh, Galvanic Blast me. Which kills Gideon. Alright. Yeah, they should be at 14 right here. It's pretty bad. Luckily, our top decks are probably better than theirs in most cases. But the fact that they already have a plating on board means any top deck they get is a threat and we need more removal to deal with it. We really need a bob. Path is great. We have a little bit of protection now. But yeah, they should already be at 10. That was a pretty big pretty big blunder there. Not attacking with a shambling vent that turn. Scared, you got it. Yeah, just get out of here. Blink Moth is a problem. Woof. If they want to trade their Blink Moth for my Shambling Vent, I'm okay with that. Alright, well. Top Deck Wars, we are losing right now. We're going to 9. And I believe it's well, not quite lethal next turn. Jeez! <laughs> they go drawn like 5 lands in a row. Oh no. Well, what can we do? Except to keep attacking. Yeah, I should have two more life, and they should be two life lower. And that's actually a huge, a huge deal. Wow, they're blocking. And they're going to equip. They're going to trade Signal Pest for Shamley Mad. That's fine. I'm fine with that. It's a bold move. Um, yeah, I think I just want to get one less land in my deck, so I actually do think I want the Marsh Flats in play. Huh. Thoughtseize? Sure. So they did have Thoughtseize, so I could have gotten blown out that turn that I didn't damnation because I wanted them to commit more creatures to the board they could have found the thought sees and we could have just lost that game and it's also pretty likely that we're gonna lose this game because I can't find any non land cards force tender does not do it and we lose wow 
That was a lot of lands in a row, and then an ineffectual card. <laughs> Bummer. Yeah, Lingering Souls, where were you? <laughs> I was almost down to 30 cards left in my deck and didn't find a single Lingering Souls. Modern Monday! Hey, welcome to round four with Gideon's Shadow. Uh, we lost a Heartbreaker there to Affinity, a really good matchup with uh, so much sideboard hate for Affinity there. But we drew a lot of lands in a row and not a single Lingering Souls in the top 25 cards of our deck in game three there. So, happens, I guess. Uh, here we've got a keepable hand that's a bit iffy on the play like we really need a second land we're playing 23 we do have another play if we don't hit a second land right away I'm gonna keep it it's it's pretty iffy though I'm gonna keep it on the on the um, merits of collective brutality and the turn one thought sees. so we're not gonna like die fast because we're gonna we're gonna see what they have and we're gonna stop them from killing us really early and so we should get a couple draw steps to find that second land and then when we do we can get rid of the extra cards that aren't gonna be important like four drops and stuff with the collective brutality oh it's humans all right so either vial is the best card in their hand so it's we're definitely taking either the noble or the vile the merits to taking vile are that it makes more mana over the course of the game than noble does for sure it gives them more tricks that they can do with their creatures at instant speed if they're playing all their creatures at Sorcery speed, we probably have a better chance of winning, so I think we just take the Vile. Taking Hierarch means their future Vile draws are pretty bad. Um, it's pretty close. I guess we can just push the Hierarch, though. But we don't really want to push the Hierarch. We'd rather save that for Mare or Kite Sail. Yeah, I mean, Collective Brutality, I don't know, it's not going to get any non-creature spells. They don't play any instants or sorceries in their deck, so that's good to know. Here comes Noble. I'm glad to play against this deck. Uh, it's a deck that I've wanted to test against. have not played against it yet. They drew a Vile for turn. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Good old Thoughtseize. Good old Thoughtseize. Um, at least here we know what we're taking, and it's the Noble. Right? We take Freebooter. They're both going to cast Noble and Mare next turn. Freebooter's a little more annoying, actually. I really don't know still. Noble, if we take Noble and we slow down their mana, they're not going to be able to cast a 3-drop for a while if they draw 3-drops. I guess we just take Noble. It's so hard. Especially because they're probably just going to draw Noble Hierarch now. Because <laughs> that's what happened last time, right? Take the Vile, they draw Vile. Reboots. They're going to take Fatal Push. We need to draw land. So we can Brutality. Get back our Fatal Push. That's not a land. Oh, wow. All right. And now we just get Overrun, huh? Bummer. I mean, it was slightly risky. Obviously, it was a one-lander. Ooh. Yep. And now we're dead. Uh, 
Oh, that's good. It's a little late now. If we draw land next turn, then we get to play both Shadow and Push, which is pretty good. They're going to flip their Averbrook. But our one mana creature is actually bigger than theirs. Oh, jeez. Good draw. Good draw. Oh, they're not playing. They're actually playing the duels. They're not playing uh, caverns. This is interesting. Maybe they just didn't draw the cavern side of their deck. We're at two. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you don't draw a second land, you're definitely not going to win any games of Magic. Um, bummer. Path is good. Wrath of God is good. Stony is okay, but I don't want to bring it in. Zealous is good against their mares and their noble hierarchs. But it's not that good otherwise. Um, and they play a lot of lords. So it's pretty risky to bring in Zealous. I know Kithian's not very good. We are not the aggro for sure. Probably board out all the Kithians. And maybe bring in one Zealous because we are on the play. It's definitely better on the play. We'll just be a control deck, a Death Shadow control deck. Um, yeah, Damnation's good. And Bob's good, so let's just keep it. Just all fetch lands. Um, yeah. Turn one vial, why not? Vial definitely makes damnation not as good. Um, I'm actually going to lead with Tide Hollow. See what they're working with there. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe we're supposed to lead with Bob. Uh, champ, free boots. Well, the free booter is bad for us, so we have to take free booter. And then they're gonna get it back when we damnation. Oh yeah. Maybe I wasn't supposed to play Tide Hollow Skuller because damnation does not play well with Tide Hollow. Interesting. Um, champion slows them down the most. But yeah, if they take our damnation with Freebooter, we just can't win the game anymore. Huh. Yeah, but Nathalia's lieutenant. Yeah. It's pretty good. I guess we don't play the Bob. Even though they're going to violin Mare at the end of our turn. Ugh, either Vile's so good. <laughs> no wonder most, most of my decks have either Vile in it. Card is bananas. 
Obviously on turn one. It's not that great after turn one, but it's insane on turn one. They're casting the mayor. Oh, they're just trying to get more damage in. They might have also drawn another two drop. I mean, I guess they probably did. Otherwise, the mayor's really good on vile. Ooh, they're just viling something in right now. That's really good for us. Another Thalia's lieutenant. All right, we're taking a billion here, but we have damnation next turn, so... This plays right into our hands. Will I play both Bob and uh, Shadow the turn after? Maybe. Um, let's attack. They're getting back the Freebooter anyway. No blocks. Uh, free damage. Love it. And we don't have anything for them to get with the freebooter now. I keep cracking fetches in response to my spells and it keeps scaring me, but I know they don't have anything here. They're just trying to scare me. I know they have just a stomping ground in hand. And now they have a freebooter as well. So Tide Hollow did its job. Obviously it would have been better as a Thoughtseize in this particular match or game, but they pumped it up to three because they can cast the Freebooter anyway. That makes sense. There's a the Stomping Ground. They're paying two for Stomping Ground? They drew another two drop then? Yeah, they must have drawn another two drop. Oh yeah, all right. So we're not out of the woods yet, but we're in good position. Tide Hall is obviously not very good on this board. Bob is also kind of a liability. I mean, we're definitely playing Death Shadow, which is fantastic on this board, as long as they don't draw a Reflector Mage. Um, and Bob does draw us some extra cards, but it's pretty scary. Even though we don't have any 5 drops, they could draw like a Mantis Rider and then Bob will kill us. So I think we just use our mana and play the Tide Hollow. It's not like the Tide Hollow is ever going to get anything later anyway. And playing Bob at this point is not great. If I find a Gideon, then I'll play Bob. Gideon of the Trials, that is. I mean, maybe it's right to play Bob there and just hope to fade a Mantis Rider for a turn or another Lord. There's the Lord, we're at four. Yeah, and we could have died to Bob. So I'm glad we didn't play it, but... Thought sees. Ugh, not a great draw. We're at four. They're going to put us to two. Oh, man. We did not do a good job at fading a good card from our opponent there. Mayor of Averbrook was quite a good draw. I mean, obviously Mantis Rider would have been better. I guess Reflector Mage would have been better. So they had better draws, but it was it was pretty good. It was definitely not a blank. We really wanted them to draw a redundant ether vial or just another land there. Um, I can't win if I don't attack. Can't 
can't play Bob because then I have to fade a two drop next turn. I guess we would have just hit a thought season. That would have been kind of okay. Yeah, if I attack, I kind of have to play Bob, though. Huh? Yeah. If I attack, I have to play Bob. And if I don't attack, I can never win this game. So, I guess we're playing Bob and we're attacking. <laughs> oh, jeez. Should have played the other fetch first. No, because we can't do 13 with that shadow. That doesn't work. Take it up to four. All right, well. We needed them to draw a blank. Like another Ether Violet or a land. Or just like a champion of the parish or something. I mean, it's not a blank, but. We're going to two, and we have to fade a two drop, or a four drop, or a three drop on top of our deck. Fade these. And we died. Uh, Collective Brutality would have been good, too. Would have been real good. <laughs> Wow, and we were going to draw a path. We won the game. <laughs> oh, if it was the other way around, we win that We win that game. That's pretty funny. Um, so yeah, if path was the first card and Collective Brutality was the second card, we path the Howl Pack and uh, Brutality that, and we win. Actually, it wouldn't matter. Just, just having Brutality or path, we won the game. Unless they have a three drop, which is possible, but even even with a three drop with both of these, we win. That's funny. Yeah, other way around, we win. The way it was, we lost. Modern Monday. All right, welcome to round five with Gideon Shadow. This is a keep. Sounds pretty sweet. I like what this deck is doing, but uh. I think we're getting a little bit unlucky, and also, uh, maybe the deck needs some tuning. <laughs> Rickthar, Aru Elf, Utopius Brawl. Well, we can deal with the Elf, so I'm going to take Utopius Brawl. So next turn they play Arbor Elf, and then, which they were probably going to do anyway. And then the next turn they're just going to Oath and Utopia Sprawl. Or Utopia Sprawl, and then Garrick, and then Oath. <laughs> yeah, we definitely are taking the Utopia Sprawl here. That deck can make a lot of mana real quick. Unfortunately, Cobru does not take... Um, oh, they're playing Oath and Nissa. Mm, they're worried about smallpox there, I guess. They grabbed a Nick, though, sure. Hmm. I think I just get a swamp with this Delta. Eh. I'm probably taking Garrick here. Uh, maybe I maybe I take some hits. If we draw Death Shadow next turn, I really want to play it and play Collective Brutality. So let's just hope that we draw Death Shadow. Two gags. Hmm. That's annoying. Well, I had an idea of what I was going to take. I guess I just take the Arbor Elf. That 
they're really far away from doing anything. If I just take Arbor out. But, I mean, I have Collective Brutality and I have nothing else to do next turn. So I do want them to cast Arbor Elf. So that I can kill it with Collective Brutality. I also have a bunch of Fatal Pushes in my deck that don't do anything against Garricks. Uh, I'll, just, I'll take a Garrick because we want them to cast Arbor Elf. Kind of a bummer though. That <laughs> they drew another Garrick. Could be worse, I guess they could have drawn a land. They know we wanted them to cast Arbor Elf, but it's not like oh. That was really good. That was a really good draw. From my opponent there. So next turn they're gonna cast Garrick. Hopefully we draw Thoughtseize. Ooh, that'll do. So Nykthos makes how much land? How much mana? It makes enough for Rurikthar, huh? Can't be Rurikthar. We know there are three cards. Really don't want them to cast Garrick. Cause them making beasts is actually really hard for us to beat. With our tutus. Oh what a bummer. If I cast Skuller and I take Garrick, they cast Rurikthar next turn because they found a Utopia Sprawl. Rough beats here. Um Definitely can't beat Rurikthar. So, I guess we just kill the Arbor Elf, and then they just cast Garrick, and we lose to Garrick. <laughs> this is the worst. Man. Not, not catching any breaks here. But, I mean, we have to kill Arbor Elf, right? There's no world in which we don't, because then we we're facing down a Rurik Thar. Wait, so if I if I tide hollow and just take Rurik Thar, let them have the Arbor Elf for a turn. They're gonna make so much mana, but they don't have anything to spend it on. If I take Rurik Thar, so they probably just make a beast. But if they draw some other payoff next turn, then it's way better to kill Arbor Elf. I'm overthinking this for sure, but I also think I just got a little tilted by my opponent drawing the Utopia Sprawl that turn. It was a perfect draw. <laughs> Literally the best draw. Um, yeah. And Garrick comes down. Wait. Wait, if they cast Garrick, do they still get Rurikthar? Was I just totally wrong in doing that? They cast Garrick, they untap two lands, they make four. Yeah, no, they can't cast Rurikthar this turn. Just a Garrick. They can next turn, but we're going to take the Rurikthar. <laughs> While we just lose to their beast. Lingering Souls is medium. Cannot lose to Verikthar. Gotcha. Alright, well, I mean, so far we're like kind of at parity right now. They have nothing, they have a Misty Rainforest in hand. We have to fade them drawing any kind of payoff because they have as much mana as they're going to want. Kessig Wolfron is a payoff that we did not fade, clearly. Um, yeah, this is, uh, is going to hurt.
It's going to hurt real bad. Jeez. Huh. Two Tide Hollows, a Thought Season, a Collective Brutality later. And we're still just getting... Getting killed here. <laughs> wow. Four interactive spells, and my opponent's like, yeah, I don't care. Do everything I needed, so get out of here. Granted, I mean, we're live to just draw like a removal spell. A fatal push would be awesome. Yeah, fatal push would be fantastic. We're gonna go to four here. I guess death shadow would be fine because it's a nine nine now. They didn't play their land. Why not? Why wouldn't they want to do more damage there? It's only one more, I guess. But, um, yeah, I really want to draw a removal spell, and I don't want... If I ended up drawing a Godless Shrine there, I would have been really sad. So let's just get that Godless Shrine out of our deck. Shamley Vent. And we're dead. Cool. Oh, man. I guess we make him do it. Because we could very easily have a path. Or a fatal push. Also, we have six points worth of blockers. Oh, yeah, if we kill Garrick. Is that not lethal? That's right, Garrick is dead here, huh? No, it's totally lethal. All right, one, two, three, one, two. They go red, green, green. Make just two with Nixos. Oh yeah, we definitely attack Garrick. I don't think we're dead actually. All right, never mind. I think we're okay here. Got to do some math before I just tilt. Oh, they have the Misty, though, so I think we are dead, but... That's if they go for it. They may not go for it, thinking I might have a fatal push. And it's very true, I might have a fatal push. I didn't have it last turn, but it's very possible that I had the Lingering Souls in my hand and drew a fatal push for turn. E-Witness. It's pretty good. Are they going to go for it? They are going for it? Yeah, that does it. So they cast out the Nissa and then went for it anyway? Whatever. That was weird. I guess they knew they had lethal either way there. Ugh. So path is good against Rurikathar. I mean, not great. Obviously, we take six to cast it, but 
I bet they're playing other big fatties that we need to deal with with Path. Um, Forge Tender seems all right against like Bonfire that they're probably playing. Zealous Persecution kills both Arbor Elf and Birds of Paradise, but I don't think they're playing Birds of Paradise. Probably just Arbor Elf and E Witness. Them having E Witness makes Relic all right, but not great. They pro they're probably playing four E Witnesses. Um, man. I think we do want early pressure, but probably not four Kithians. Um, Damnation's unlikely to be good. Probably just want the spot removal. Go to two Kithians because we put in another one drop. And maybe we drop a four drop Gideon. Yeah, Gideon's actually not very good here. The big Gideon. Maybe we just leave one in the deck. We'll play three Kithians. Um, yeah, let's keep. Turn one, we're just going to play a Shambling Vent, so we have a lot more options next turn. And we get to see an extra card with the Thought Seize. Or the Tide Hollow. Sprawl. Let's see what they got. Oh, they are playing birds. Hmm. So here, I think I want to take E-Witness. Since it's possible that they'll just play E-Witness next turn and take whatever else I took. We're gonna play Marsh Fats and pass. Unsure if I want to go get a Goblet Shrine with it. Um, based on their hand, I think we do want to get a Goblet Shrine because I don't think the life total is gonna to matter too too much. And if we drop Death Shadow, we'd really like to uh, be able to cast it. If I knew they were playing birds also, I would have definitely brought in the Zealous. Persecutions. There is Death Shadow, alright. Um so yeah, let's scholar. Oops. Color take their Garrick, most likely. They do Blood Moon. Good gracious. Guess we're gonna take Blood Moon. <laughs> Can't beat the Blood Moon. Um, didn't think about how they probably have that in their deck, and I probably should have fetched up a Swamp. Um, yeah, didn't really think about that. But luckily they can't cast Garrick next turn, and we do have a beater. That was a really good draw, my opponent. That was a really good draw. Wow. All right. Okay, breaks are not coming our way today. This is just, uh, like, why not just play a land that didn't do anything? All right, all right.
Now we're uh, pretty vulnerable to a top deck bonfire. But I think it's better to play the spirits there because next turn we can flash it back and play one of these. Yep, here comes Garrick. He's going to bring a beast, buddy. And then promptly die, but I'm pretty sure he goes for a beast here. Otherwise, he just dies anyway, right? Yeah. We're still ahead, I think. So it's not the end of the world. Kithian's actually a really good draw. It doesn't play around Bonfire to play the Kithian, but... Uh, yeah, maybe I should play around Bonfire. I'm not sure. Oh, we're going to play all of them, actually. Never mind. Yeah. Oh no, we're not playing Death Shadow. Just Forge Tender and Kithy in here. Death Shadow would just die. It would it would be bad to play Death Shadow here. Um so yeah, we're in pretty good position. Oh the Nessa. We're about to flip a Kithian. They found a forest. Played the forest. So that tells me they probably have a 5 drop in hand. If we get to a game 3 here, I'm definitely going to think about how they have Blood Moon in their deck and I'm going to fetch basics. Pretty easy easy for us to play around Blood Moon because we do have nine fetches in the deck and four basics, so pretty easy to uh, fetch basics. And Blood Moon not be very useful. Alright. Game plan is just Kibian. They're going to block. We're going to make it indestructible. And uh, I mean, this is why I put Kithian in the deck because he's really easy to flip with Lingering Souls. And there's four Lingering Souls and four Kithians. So. Make them attack. Making them attack doesn't seem great. I think we just make one of these spirits indestructible. Summoner's Pack. What do they get here? Acidic Slime getting back their Blood Moon? Is that the best 5 drop they could get? Thrag Tusk is pretty good. Yeah, I guess Thrag Tusk is solid here. But then if I kill their Arbor Elf, they lose. Yeah, this puts them in a precarious situation. Primeval Titan? Oh, they drew land. Never mind. This is not a precarious situation. This is just great for them. Ew. Wow, my opponent's a champion. Wow.
Yep. Seems about right. So I guess they tag with Gideon, hopefully they block with prime time, and then we kill their prime time. Then they can pump their beast a lot, but then we'll have a huge death shadow. I don't know. They could also kill Gideon, which is fine. They probably just take the hit from Gideon, huh? Maybe it was better just send the Gideon at, or I mean, have the prime time come at Gideon, yeah. Yep. So, I guess we're gonna kill the Arbor Elf. Or do we just make spirits? So are we dead next turn? They're at eight. If we make spirits and then we get in for six, then we can just get in with the last two with the cobru. Yeah, I guess it's better to make spirits. Because I don't think we're dead here. They make this trample. This already has trample, so we're taking six plus um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're giving it plus five, so eight plus six. So if they don't draw a land, we're not dead. And we can just chump it. Yeah, I guess this is better. I don't know. Yeah, if we do this and they swing and untap, that means we get them on the swing back. Oh, and they have to play, play for Summoner's Pact. Yeah, actually, we're in good position here. We're in good position. It's not great, but they're probably going to attack primetime into Gideon and maybe leave the beast back. And then we get to use two modes on Cobru, killing their Arbor up and draining them for two and swinging out. Oh, both of them are going to go at Gideon. Oh, Gideon, you are super dead, dude. <laughs> They don't have another creature here, even if they do. No, if they do... Yeah, they need another creature, though. So if they have another creature or a way to make another creature, then we don't win. Gideon is just dead. No blocks here. What is your last card? Is it a bolt? Bolt's okay. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I guess we used it with three modes, whatever. Collective Brutality, winning games. Alright. I guess I do have a bolt. Yeah, but then I just 
Keep him alive with that. And they are dead. For Xaxes. Okay, untap your land. What is the point of that? <laughs> Come on, man. Or woman. Whoever you are, why? why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, sometimes people don't know when they're dead, I guess. Alright, uh... So in that position, Damnation would have been kind of cool. Big Gideon was never going to be good. Flipped Kithian was nice. Um, so they are playing Lightning Bolt and probably Bonfire. So I really like Burnt and Forest Tender. It actually won us that game there because they did drop Bolt. Um, my opponent had some really good draws and we ended up winning anyway. So that that was cool. But, um, do I want to go a more control route? Probably not. But it's true that if they don't have any creatures, it's really hard for them to win. I definitely want to bring in Zealous, because they are playing Birds and Arbor Elves. So that's something we're definitely bringing in. And uh, we're probably taking out that. And maybe bringing in Ranger of Eos, because... We can go get some dudes with it. A little refill action. It's probably better than Big Gideon. What are we cutting? Um, Kithian was cool, but maybe don't need both. And then Path. Path is good against Primeval Titan ish. Yeah, actually, Zealous is insane. Yeah, I guess we'll just play one path. Maybe, maybe we'll play two path, three push. I want to cut the off, the off illustration push. All right, let's do this. Two, two path, three push, two Zealous. So we have a lot of ways to interact with their early plays. Um. This hand, we took out two of our Kithians, and we have two in our hand, and it is pretty bad. I mean, yeah, turn two Tide Hollow is probably pretty good. I really want to have some way to interact with their Mana Dorks, though. So I'm going to Mulligan. Um, yeah, this is better. Don't want another Lingering Souls. I think one Lingering Souls will do fine. Thought season to Bob is pretty good. Not gonna, not gonna mulligan that. They did not have a one drop. That's good for us. And we drew it zealous. All right. We're definitely gonna search up a swamp here. And thoughtsies. Bolt for the Bob, and then nothing going on. So definitely taking the bolt. I mean, Acidic Slime is scary at some point, but they need a lot of lands for that to work out. Played their forest, and they drew a two drop here. Wow. <laughs> My opponent is a champion. <laughs> Just, all right. Yep. They're gonna Garrick. Next turn. Can't do anything about it though because they have two Garricks. So yeah. Cool. So they play Nykthos. They untap Nykthos. Make three mana. Yep. 
Yeah, this is bad. We're going to have to thought seize the acidic slime next turn. All right, we know what they drew. We know their entire hand. That's good. So we're definitely thought seizing the acidic slime. They're probably making a 3 3, which is going to be really annoying. Man, that Utopia's Brawl Draw was pretty nice opponent. I guess their deck is mostly like one mana things. So it wasn't like that insane that they drew it, but their hand was bad and their hand turned from bad into like very, very decent. Um, cool. We hit a land there that was pretty ideal. Um, I wish it was a dual land though because now we can't also cast Tide Hollow. I guess we could let them Acidic Slime, but then we'd lose our Swamp, and that's pretty bad. But then their Garrick would be pretty pressured. Um, yeah, we're just going to play the Forge Tender and Thought Seize their Acidic Slime. And pass the turn. The Persecution could be really good against the Beast at some point. What's our Lingering Soul token trade with the Beast? With the Beasts? At some point? What did you draw? Really? <laughs> what are you doing with all this mana? Oh. Alright. Yep. That was a really good draw. <laughs> I guess it could have been worse. They're getting back Lightning Bolt? Oh, that's great. Why not Acidic Slime? Alright. Alright, we're okay here. Got back lightning bolt in the face of a forge tender? That was a weird one. I'm really confused as to why they didn't get back acidic slime and cast it and get my black source there. I mean, they don't know that I don't have more lands in hand, but I think that would have been a much better play. Um, and I'm really glad they didn't make it. Obviously, they don't have perfect information, so they don't know that. But we do know they don't have another lightning bolt in hand or anything, so it, I don't know. Strange one. So we can kill Garrick, but then they're just going to cast another one. So I don't love it. Um, this way we can take the other Garrick and kill Garrick, and that's great. So we're definitely going to do that. <laughs> Alright, Zealous Persecution, you did your job. Yes. Alright. It's coming up k pons right now, you guys. Love Zealous Persecution. <laughs> I love that it does both the sides of Orzhov Pontiff all at once for two mana. Such a clean answer to things. Great when you're playing Lingering Souls. And my opponent's in top deck mode with access to five mana here. Doubt they're gonna attack. Really? What did you draw? Alright. That's scary <laughs> that they're attacking. 
I don't know. Uh, I guess they just want, it, want me to die to the Bob. And so far, I'm not dying to Bob. Um, I think it's more important to start attacking with the Shambling Vent than it is to get Lingering Souls in play. Yeah. I mean, flashback Lingering Souls. No lightning bolt one time. I guess if they had a bolt, they probably would have bolted the Skuller last turn. So then, then cast. Yeah, they would have definitely bolted the Skuller and cast Garrick last turn. We just have to, we just have to fade bonfire for a little bit. And I don't know. It's likely, I guess, that they drew a big thing. That they couldn't cast yet. So it's likely we're facing down a prime time next turn. Definitely chumping this. And attacking with Shambling Vent and hopefully drawing like a fatal push or something. Lingering Soul is pretty good. Um, yeah, we can flash back Lingering Souls and attack with Shambling Vent here, so that's good. If they don't block, that means they probably have a 6 drop in hand. If they do block, I don't know what it means. They didn't block. Um, likely they have a prime time. Likely they're going to get us with uh, Kessig Wolf Run in a couple turns, but we have a little bit of time to find an out to that. We could find a path. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. We're definitely in an okay position here. The Shambling Vent counteracting the Bob a little bit. And Bob's been kind to us this game. Hmm. Swinging Beast. So they're at 8. We have more than 8 coming in. We still have more than, we still have 8 coming in if we block. So I guess we just block. Still have lethal. And if they have another blocker, which is likely, then we didn't have lethal anyway. Because we'd need to draw two removal spells. Pretty unlikely. Garrick. Alright. Hopefully not Garrick into something else. Thirty beast, yeah, and a land. Okay, cool. Lingering souls. Um, definitely want to kill Garrick, but I can't. Hmm. If I Gideon and make it so this doesn't deal any damage, then I can swing out at Garrick, and then it's going to die. And then I can cast Lingering Souls. That seems pretty good. Then as long as I don't top deck a Kessig Wolf run, I'm in pretty good shape. Yeah, alright. I think that's the plan.
they know about the lingering souls we're just gonna cast it everybody at Garrick yeah we just have to fade Keswick Wolf run for like one turn I think why even block what why are you blocking you're just losing a birds for no reason what that didn't make any sense All right, no Keswick Wolf run one time. I guess they could drop Bonfire as well, but they obviously didn't. Faded the Keswick Wolf run in the Bonfire. Bolt would be bad. Scoos is not good either. Oh, geez. Scoos. God damn it. Okay. Seems good. Woof. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna eat stuff right now. Sure. Get my lingering soul, sure. Makes sense. And there's an acidic slime in there too if you wanna grab that. Gain another life. Uh, an e-witness, yeah, that makes more sense. Sure, you're at 11. You only have one more life to gain, and we got you on a three-turn clock. It's not the best thing ever, but... It's a thing. Especially since I have a bobbin playing on at six. Yeah, this is iffy. Where are those going? They're both going at me. I think I let one of them hit me. No, that's too risky. Definitely have to block bolt. Alright. I don't know why they lost their bird last turn for no reason. That was kind of weird, but I was into it. All right, Bob. What's up? Death Shadow. Death Shadow is great right here. That is a fantastic draw. Um, let's get an emblem. Cannot die. Let's play the Death Shadow. Fetch land. Might as well cast the Tide Hollow Skeller. I don't see what it hurts. Might as well fetch. Go down to two. I mean, we can't die, right? <laughs> Plus, we have tons of chump blockers for for Gideon. So, I think we're in pretty good position here. Can we pull out game three against Green Devotion? Got him. All right. Cool. So two and three, but uh, as you can see there, like we can easily stall the game up and then end up drawing Lingering Souls and Gideons and Death Shadows in the later game. And uh, Gideon of the Trials giving us the emblem with Bob and, and Death Shadow and our fetch lands and stuff is, is pretty nice. And obviously it ended up working out, even though our opponents were drawing pretty well, <laughs> like our... Uh, a green devotion opponent 
hit some hit some heat off the top of their deck and we were able to pull it out i'm pretty happy about that yeah i uh, didn't get the luckiest against affinity and didn't get that lucky against humans either i think affinity is probably a great matchup for the deck let's go back and look at the deck um so in conclusion i think the deck definitely has potential it's possible that four mana gideon is just not that good in modern main decks Let's see, what, what third color would I want to bring in? Because I do think the deck is missing a little bit of something here. We could play Tarmogoyf. We are kind of looking for a two drop, but then at that point we're just playing Abzan Death Shadow. <laughs> and it's not really a Gideon Tribal deck anymore. But yeah, the green gives us access to some good stuff out of the sideboard. Abrupt Decay in the main deck could be cool. Mostly for Tarmogoyf, though. I could see Tarmogoyf being good. Anyway, uh, so yeah, maybe maybe shift it over to Abzan for Tarmogoyfs, which also play well with Kithian, and then we probably cut the Gideons, the Damnation, or the, the big Gideons. We'd play the little Gideon, and we'd probably cut... Well, that'd be for the four goyves. Probably cut the Tide Hollow Scholars and just play two Inquisitions and two Paths in the main. Yeah, I guess that would be fine. And then at that point, maybe we just cut the Lingering Souls for Street Wraiths and just go all in and play Traverse. <laughs> no, I don't think we'd do that. Uh... So yeah, I don't know. I mean, the deck has potential. It's not at its full power for sure yet, but it's a fun thing to try, and I really like Gideon Tribal. I think this might not be the best shell, but it's it's something to try out. If you're looking to, to try out some Gideon Tribal, this is certainly not a bad place to start. All the cards in the deck are powerful, but yeah, let me know about your deck lists if you have any deck that you're trying that's Gideon Tribal. I wanna know uh, what it is. Post it in the comments. I'm going to post this up on Reddit, and uh, I'd love to brainstorm with you guys. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Modern Monday with k Ponce, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you uh, hanging out. See you next time here on Newmont Gaming. Modern Monday.